it was a choice of me either playing the role of Hamlet in this play or her calling my mother uh, to talk about something that I had gotten in trouble with that week that they didn't talk about yet. I've been preparing for all of these moments for for much of my life without even knowing uh, how does and why does a, a, a black man make that choice to become a police officer in this day and age with everything that's happened. What is the push? What is the draw? How do you sustain it, you know, um, and be a black man in that world and see what's happening on the outside? How did you get into acting? How did that start? How did I get into acting? Acting found me early on, uh, fifth, fourth, fifth grade. Uh, our class got picked to do the uh, school play. Uh, my teacher at the time, Miss Allen, kind of she, uh, she 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 finagled her way to to pushing me in, into into doing something that I didn't think I could do. Uh, I probably had the messiest desk in my class. I was the most talkative. Um, and she she recognized that you know she she challenged me you know she uh, she pushed me to doing something that I really didn't want to do and when I say challenged me and pushed me it was a choice of me either playing the role of Hamlet in this play or her calling my mother uh, to talk about something that I had gotten in trouble with that week that they didn't talk about yet those were my options and, <laughs> so and, uh, you got blackmailed <laughs> in in the, in the best way possible you know she she recognized that I needed to be challenged and. Uh, it, uh, it worked out. It worked out in, in, in a very, very special way because it gave me a sense of pride in myself. I did something I didn't think I could do. It raised my level of, of self-esteem. I looked at myself different. And uh, to this day, I still get that in entertainment and acting with writing, producing, wanting to direct. It's it, I'm, I welcome challenges now because I recognize that going through something and, and you know going through that journey there's, there's something special there for me to grab, you know, grab or learn from, you know, success isn't always going to be about getting a medal or, or winning something. Sometimes it's just about an experience and learning. So yeah, I'm, I'm down for the, for the journey now. Nice. Nice. And when you, you get that acting bug, when do you think you actually caught it? I, I, it was, it was the moment we finished the play. I kid you not. Like it was this thing, like I, I, I'd never felt it before. And we got the standing ovation, you know, uh, and I, 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 I was Hamlet, you know, like that's that's me. My name is in the program. My mother's there. The, the, my elementary school is there. It felt right. And I told my mother after that, I said, uh, I want to do more of this. And she's like, really? Because I never <laughs> expressed that per se. And mind you, yeah. and I'd done like, you know, little things here or there. Like I was part of a, a wonderful group called the Young Saints. And it was like an after-school program where they teach you, you, you dance, you sing. Uh, they had like a summer work program. So I did all that, but I didn't know, you know what I mean? There was, there was, it was more of a, my mom was kind of a single mom because my dad was dealing with a lot of that, that 80s drug stuff that was going on. So he was in and out of jail. My stepdad, actually, my, my real father passed. Um, so my mom was very much a single mother at the time. So that program was, you know, a way for us to, you know, be, surrounded by some good stuff while she's still working you know and then we can get picked up after she gets off work and so forth um so it wasn't like she was like go be an actor this was this was just fate and you know everything that i got to play with came back you know for me to utilize in the future when i finally decided this is what i wanted to do um yeah go figure <laughs> yeah nice so how was how was getting into hollywood <laughs> you gonna laugh, man. Get, getting into Hollywood for me was, and I'm not gonna say it, it was easy. I'm gonna say that it was, I, I was blessed. I was blessed. I got stories for everything. Um, senior year in high school, uh, three of my friends that go to my high school get a record deal. They are working with Babyface, Yap Young Records at the time. Um, you know, uh, it's they, they've got their whole thing going. They're about to go shoot this music video. They're like, Arlen, you should try to come. I was like, man, I can't. Like, I'm, I'm in, you know, I'm, I'm still in school. 
Um, they were like, ask Miss D, who was our magnet coordinator at the time. So I go to her office and I'm like, hey, Miss D, can I go with, you know, Third Story? That's the name of the group. Can I go with them for this music video? She was like, what are you talking about? Go back to class. And I said, but here's the thing. I said, we're here at this performing arts school and you know, this is this is it actually happening. Like I can learn, I've never been on an actual set before. And you know, and she's looking at me and I said, you know, everybody's gonna be there. You know, uh, their road manager, Tony was with them at the time. I said, Tony's gonna be there. I said, and I'm coming back at it. You know, like you can call them, you know, here's numbers. And she looked at me, she said, you know what? Go ahead. And she let me leave school. My mother didn't even know I was going let me leave school and I go to this music video set um, I'm hanging out I'm having the time of my life actors are late they need people in the scene uh, they're like Arlen you want to be in I was like yeah for sure so I jump in this scene and there's someone playing really bad music and I was supposed to be we're all supposed to look bored in this classroom and I wasn't doing a good enough job looking bored and so the director told me to uh, uh, Arlen fall asleep pretend like you fall asleep so I put my head down like I fell asleep what I didn't realize that he was telling everybody once I put my head down to get up and leave. Okay, you leave, you leave. And then it was just me in the room at the time. I didn't realize it. He's like, Arlen, now wake up. So I wake up and I was like, yo. And I had this weird look at my face like, what's going on? He said, okay, now leave. And then made it in the music video. And <laughs> they ended up going and meeting a producer, showing him the music video. And they said, oh, it's our friend Arlen. He's, a, he's an actor at our school. He's like, oh, he has a cool look. Tell him to call me. I'm looking for people to manage. And I also have this move that I'm trying to produce. And I called the guy, um, gentleman, his name is Britton Hine, ended up becoming my manager years later. Um, but I was so heavy in a track and football when I called him. I was like, yeah, he's talking about all this acting stuff, whatever. And I just continued to focus on school, acting, foot, uh, excuse me, school, track and football. And then I graduated, got to college and realized I had all this time on my hands. And I was like, I really should have been doing this acting thing. Like it's still, I have a yearning for it still, you know, but now I'm trying to pursue this sociology degree. And I was like, ah, it is what it is. I thought it was done. I go back to my high school, maybe like a, a semester in a college to go visit, uh, or end, like, yeah, end of my first semester of college to go visit one of my track coaches to talk about my track career and what's going on in college and stuff. And I run into one of my friends that's still in high school who just had a meeting with that same producer the night before. And they're like, yo, Arlen, I just talked to that producer. He was like, if, tell, if I saw you to say what's up, I was like, really? I was like, was he mad? Cause I never called him back. And he was like, no, he wasn't mad at all. He said, to, you know, to tell you what's up. I was like, give me his number. I take the number, I call him and he had just gotten the money uh, and the green light for his independent film. He says, I'm gonna let you audition, but please don't disappear like you did before. Uh, I said, okay, cool. So he gives me the information. Um, he lets me audition. I drive um, over, uh, what is that, uh, Laurel Canyon for the first time in my 1987 Escort into the valley. Um, that was my car. When I turned 18, I got an 87 <laughs> Escort. I loved my car. Um, I drive over into the valley for the first time and I've never been in the valley before. And I audition for this movie with, with him and his producing partner um, at their condo. And maybe like a year later after callbacks and you know uh meeting different people that are involved in the project i end up getting the role in this movie called the players court b it aired on bet like a whole bunch of stuff happened with it but that movie got me into the screen actors guild because they tap hardly me it got me my agent my first agent who i'm still with for uh voiceover and print and commercial um and they tossed me out there with, with the wolves you know and I stayed, I studied, got an acting coach. I stayed well read. I watched as many films as possible. Uh, I went to movie premieres. I, I, I watched literally everything. I watched good movies, I watched bad movies. I studied like, you know, like, like nobody's business. I, I just loved it and started soaking it up. And soon the people I was watching on TV became my peers. And that's when I realized, wow, I'm really doing what I'm supposed to be doing because the people that I grew up watching on Saturday morning cartoons, you know, it's not sad to see Saturday morning TV shows and stuff like that. Kids that I would see in commercials, now I'm at auditions with them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now we know each other's names. I remember being the one in the audition room where everybody was like, yo, what's up? And I didn't know anybody. But now, little by little, oh, who booked it? And some dude named Arlen, he booked it. 
you know? And then we, I start meeting people and here I am almost 20 years later still doing it. Like we, we call things random, but it's like nothing randomly happens. Like that's it's, right. It's literally in timing and just the yeah. fact that you have friends that are getting this opportunity and then like you end up going along with this opportunity which takes you further along down the line. It's, yeah, N- and never know it. in school. Yeah, you, you never, never know. If Ms. D says, no, I can't go, you know, it's, it's there, there's so many different situations. There's, a, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you probably read the book, uh, Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. So when I read that book, it made me reminisce and go back like, okay, I've been preparing for all of these moments for for much of my life without even knowing it. Right. And right. it put in my head, moving forward, whatever's coming next, I'm working for it now. So let me not take any of these moments just by chance. I'm gonna meet as many people as I can. I'm gonna build as many bridges as I can because I don't know where these roots are, you know, or what's gonna come from these roots that have been planted now. So I'm just gonna, you know, yeah. be be, uh, be along for this journey and really enjoy it and learn from it and, and everything in between. And it's that understanding. It's that understanding <laughs> that everything, like every moment has a place. So it's just, it, you think about it, if you change small things in your past, big things change right in the future. So it's, I love stuff like that. <laughs> Me too, <laughs> man. Me too. David Makes a Man, how do you end up on this set? Oh, wow. David Makes a Man was, was a journey. It was, uh, it was a special journey. Um, my journey with David Makes a Man started early because I auditioned for Moonlight first. And I got a call back. I got a work session with Barry Jenkins. And in my mind, I was like, this is it. I'm going to get to work with Terrell McCraney. I'm going to get to work with... Uh, with, with Barry Jenkins and even when I read the script I told my manager I was like this is something special it's gonna be really really good I didn't know it was gonna win the Academy but I just knew that there was texture and layers and levels to this and I wanted the opportunity to to be a part of, of this journey God bless the actors that got it because they absolutely murdered it um, it wasn't for me to get you know um, but that experience in itself planted a seed in my head that I want these are the type of roles and the people that I want to work with, I want to work with 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 um within with an art that is that is on the edge of you know change and and revelation and growth and everything in between. That's what I that's what every actor says in their head. But I really really wanted that. Uh, fast forward, and I get to audition for season one of David Makes Man. I auditioned for the role of Sky, and I thought I was like, this is it. You know, I said it's coming back around. Um, Terrell McCraney, you know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe Barry had a conversation with, with Terrell and now here I am auditioning for this. I put all this stuff in my head um, and I ended up not getting that role either. And I said, okay, all right, well, you know, let's see what happens next. You know, I'm auditioning for other jobs and everything in between. And then I get a call uh, towards the end of that year that I had, they loved my, that someone in, in, in the on the producer side of the show, the creators loved what I did for the first audition. But here's a, there's another role of uh, older JG that you know, what would I be interested in? And I was like, told my manager, I was like, yeah, of course, you know. And so I booked this role. Kwame books the role as well, who plays David. And we go to Orlando and we shoot one scene that was supposed to be at the end of season one. But then the show was on the bubble, there's a lot of stuff happening. And so our options, which was we get introduced to the end of season one and come season two, things were supposed to happen. Um, but now our options ended because they weren't sure what's happening with the show. So all of that went away. And we, I thought it was dead in the water again. Uh, fast forward, the show wins the Peabody Award. Um, the, the, the stock in the show starts rising. The world changes. There are, you know, people of color all of a sudden, specifically black men, being murdered and killed in the street, you know, by police. And the, the world is, the eyes are on people of color and specifically black men and black people. Um, and so now a show about a young black boy from Florida trying to figure out who he is as a black man and become a man, it's it, it weighs heavier. And now the eyes and the ears are more in tune. So now the show gets picked up again and now it's happening. 
and then there was a call hey uh the show is going we would love to have you back for uh for, for season two of david mix man uh went through another auditioning process because jg's character had now sh shifted and changed now he's a police officer uh and so i auditioned went through that process um kwame read with me for my audition uh and god bless me you know they opened up the doors for me and i arrived on set and went straight to work the show came out and i was like okay this is this is gonna be cool and then Again, like everything started happening, like everything Black Lives Matter started happening. Yeah. Like, this show is yeah. so timely. Question, what's the pressure that you felt as a black man going into a role playing a black cop in the oh, wow. intense environment of policing now? Like, how did that affect you? What did that, what did that feel like? For me, it's one that I welcomed. Um, because I think it's a conversation that continues and still is pushed to the side. We mentioned it here or there, we talk about it here or there, but there's never been a full discussion of it the way it should, because it gets overshadowed by all of the other stuff, you know, the qualified immunity, the, you know, the, the, t the gun versus the taser, it gets overshadowed, the, the, the people that have, that have, that have been lost, you know, like it gets overshadowed by a lot of that stuff. And I think it's equally important. So for me, it was something that I welcomed. I said, oh boy, okay, I'm on a show that's really going to crack this open a little bit and really start letting us unravel the layers of what's really happening there behind the scenes. Why does, uh, how does and why does a, a, a black man make that choice to become a police officer in this day and age with everything that's happened. What is the push? What is the draw? How do you sustain it, you know? Um, and be a black man in that world and see what's happening on the outside. So it was something that I definitely wanted to, um, I, I looked forward to, to, to playing because I wanted the questions. I wanted the discussions because I know that it, was, it wasn't necessarily about me. It was more about let's talk about this because I know that there are a, a, a group that of, of people that I probably feel like they don't have a voice, you know what I'm saying? And probably need to be heard. And it's something that needs to be dissected. Um, so the pressures of it was real for sure, because I understand it's, it's, it's polar opposites in, 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 in one sense, but it was something that I was very intrigued and excited to, to tap into because it's, it's, it's under the radar. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hate asking people inside of a project this question. Um, this, this is going to be a good question. I love it. <laughs> now, is what do you what do you want to come next? And like, what do you want your legacy to be as a actor? Mm. What I want to come next is actually very very simple. It's what I've always wanted. It's growth growth is what I want and that growth can come in the form of of me growing as a man growing as an actor as a writer uh, maybe a director I, I want to grow in a sense that allows me to be a true reflection of real life that is going to be about affecting people from the inside out I don't want to just entertain I think there's a lot of inter entertainment I love the entertainment industry um, but I think we're saturated by entertainment. We, however, are not balanced out with, with you know, with, with that fine line of not message. I don't want to be like the message actor or the message person, but I want to be a part of work that is, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That, that, is, that, is, that is growing, you know, that is affecting people, that is, that is growing with the world. That's what I want. Um, and I would love my legacy to be one of um, a person of empathy, a person of, of, of honesty and truth in regards to being an actor, and one that was that had no fear. I have no fear at all in stepping into the shoes or the roles of any person, uh, of, of any sex, of any, um, you know, we're talking about LGBTQ, I have no fear in being a part of telling anyone's story. That's something that I that I that I prided myself with being as an actor. My job is to be a reflection of real life. Um, I don't judge. 
I don't make a decision. I approach it from a, from a, from a place of, of reality and truth. Um, and part of that comes from me uh, when I was going at, going through my, uh, trying to get my sociology degree. I love sociology because it's a study of people and society. In math, one plus one is always gonna equal two. But in sociology, society's always shifting and changing. Uh, you know, I live in the West Adams, Baldwin Hills area. It's changing and I'm watching it change, you know? Uh, so the society here is changing. So with that being said, as an actor, you don't get to, and, and approaching it from a, from a sociology standpoint, you don't get to make a choice to be left, right, or any place else. You just have to be a reflection of real life. And being a reflection of real life means you don't get to judge, you know? Playing a black officer uh, on a show like David Makes Man, I don't get to make a, a choice of left or right or blue or black. I have to make a choice of honesty and truth. And that is very much that gray area in the middle that is interesting to watch. It's interesting to dissect. Um, and it's it's real. You know, they say uh, there's three sides to a story. The, your side, my side, and the truth. And the truth is that area in the middle because you can, you can ask a white officer a question and he's going to tell you his truth. You can ask a black officer a question and he's going to tell you his truth. And somewhere in the middle, those things meld together and there's something special there that will allow everybody to play with, you know, and not necessarily agree with, but it's there and it's real and you have to be honest with yourself about what's there. You can't live in, in, on, on one side of the fence by itself. You know, and that's also how I, how I approach playing JG to not play it, you know, just from a sense of what's blankly there in front of you. JG's a cop. Okay, cool. Well, why is he a cop? You know, JG's got a common law wife. He's got a daughter. There's layers and levels to it that um, I've been I've been enjoying myself playing with. Yeah, love it. I love it.